I got away from all the action and stayed out there and stuff. And uh, it was a hard way to play, you know. I mean, cause especially when you're a small kid and, and you beat somebody, they, they don't accept that, you know. They're going to like nail you the next time. So, um, and I don't think that's a bad way of um, playing soccer. Now they got all these uh, age pure groups and that, and um, it's a lot easier when you're playing with somebody your own age and same size and that. But I learned the hard way. So when I went up and started living with my brother and that, when I got to 15, he came home one day. He was like playing for a semi-pro team. He said, "Hey, get your boots." He said, "Somebody's not turned up, and you can come and play with me." You know, this afternoon, and it was in a semi-pro league. So off I go, and I go and start playing with him. And I'm playing left wing, which was my position. So off we go, started play, and I went by the fullback. First thing I did, I, I crossed the ball. So this was a older, much older player. Hey, boy, he says, uh, "You do that again, I'll break your leg." <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, goodness gracious, and nobody's ever told me that before, you know. <laughs> well, I, I stayed away, you know. I mean, I, and I, I told my brother half time. He said, "Oh, don't take any notice. He's just trying to frighten you." I said, "Well, he's done a good job." <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, that so th it was. <clears throat> I often wonder because staying down here at the time, people weren't found down here. You know, there wasn't any scouting around here. Uh, it used to take about four and a half hours to go from here to Bristol in your car and stuff like that. So you didn't have scouts coming down here to look for talent. But up around London and that, they're everywhere. So <clears throat> I was playing for Dunstable Town, and then there was a guy who was in charge of Hitchin. Hitchin was a, an amateur team then, but a very good amateur team. Uh, Larry, Laurie Scott, who had been fullback for Arsenal, international player. And I went over there pre-season, had a little trial, and he signed me on for the season. And uh, it was a nice environment. Um, you're playing on good fields. At the end of the games, the home team had to entertain the away team by having a meal and all that stuff. It was like, a, you know, you're playing for the, the sport, you know? And it was, it was a lovely environment. And it, I'm not saying it made you soft or nothing, but it was a friendly atmosphere. You know, nobody wanted to break anybody's legs and that stuff. You're just playing a bit of fun. So Larry Scott got me a, a trial for Arsenal when I was um, 16 and a half. And... Uh, I still wanted to play for Exeter City. I wanted to be by myself. Uh, I didn't want to be a burden to my brother uh, anymore because he's not been married that long and uh, he wanted to start his own family and that. And So um, anyway, I go and play for Arsenal in the youth team and things, and I played pretty good. So, uh, But I didn't like the atmosphere. A lot of those players I played with were like youth international players, and they were arrogant. And uh, they, after the games and that, he'd be singing, we're the fine, you know, the best Arsenal, this, that, and the other. And I, what am I seeing, you know? So I thought, I don't, I don't want to play for this. So anyway, the uh, w one afternoon I get called into the office. Billy Wright was the manager at the time. Alex Ford was in charge of the youth team. I think it was a guy called Les Shannon that I've, I've known. And then there was an, someone else. And I'm sat at the table by myself. Here I am, like 16 and a half or something. And a load of spotty face. I don't used to have spotty face, you know, terrible, like this little kid. And would you like to play for Arsenal? They said, you know. Well, Billy Wright did, and they were all there. I said, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, I turned Arsenal down. So I said, well, I looked at it. There was five left wingers in front of me. So not having the proper guidance. Well, the guy said, um, things change quickly in football, you know. I said, no, I, d I just don't feel comfortable here, you know. So um, I rode away to Exeter City, and I got a letter back pretty quick. Yeah, you can come down on trial and that, you know. So uh, I ended up coming down to Exeter in 1963, I think it was, and um, coming here and having a trial. So. They paid my expenses, which was about six pounds, so I was over the moon about that, and uh, off we go. So I didn't know what to expect. I'm the only kid there. The rest are all senior players, you know? So off we go. We 
running around everywhere, you know, and uh, thought this is well, I felt pretty good because all of a sudden I'm in amongst all those players that I used to watch all the time. I think, oh, blimey, I, I can, I'm going to be playing with these guys, perhaps, you know. I, it was great. So um, we're running off over the back there somewhere, I, you know. I, I felt, blimey, it was after about three days, I thought, are they going to bring out any of these soccer balls? And, you know, because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I'm here for. This is a, like a cross-country team or something. But anyway, and I remember after a week, I was like shattered. So I went and saw the manager who was Jack Edwards at the time. And I said, you know, I need to go back and see my brother. There's something happened over there. And um, uh, is it possible? You know, okay. So he gave me another fiver to get from here to Dunstable. Well, it got me from here to Dawlish Warren, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I took, a, took a week off, which was good because it gave me time to kind of recover because I was I mean, blisters on your boots and or your, on your feet and that. And uh, I thought, I don't want to be a soccer player if this is what it means, you know, you can be doing every day, just running and running and running. So anyway, it came back and then we started to play a little bit <clears throat> pre-season. And... Uh, I think back then there was enough players when you play possible versus probables or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm playing at St. James's Park one afternoon in the, that type of setup game. And uh, of course, you you know, I'm I'm achieving what I've always thought I wanted to do, you know. So I'm out there and uh, I did okay. And after that, they offered me a contract to play. And it was enough to like financially look after myself for a year and also <clears throat> it would give me a chance to let my brother get on with his own life and I'm just going to be here and see what happens. So uh, <clears throat> I was, you know, excited about the future, you know, and, and the senior players helped me out a lot. A lot of them did, you know, and they gave me a little tip to do this and how to do that. And it was uh, quite interesting. So, um, so we're playing along. <laughs> and uh, I'm in the reserves the first start of the season and played a couple of games and uh, <clears throat> I think the, about the third game it was and uh, we're losing at home St. James's Park and I'm playing left wing and uh, something got inside of me which I wish it would have done a lot of times later in my career as such but I, thought, I don't want to lose so I got the ball and I did a, a messy didn't I I went by a couple of people and scored a, two goals in the last five minutes and we won. So, <laughs> so I got interviewed by the newspaper guy from the Express and Echo and, and kind of said, what, what happened, you know, what did you do at the end there? He said, why, you know, why, what do you think, what were you thinking? I said, I, I, I said to myself, I don't want Exeter City to lose. So I stopped passing the ball and I went on solos and managed to, you know, do something quite good which is probably about near enough the last time I've ever beat anybody. But <laughs> 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 Anyway, so things were going all right. And uh, the season had started, the regular season started. And somebody must have been injured because about the third game in, this, in the season, I get selected for the first team, left wing. So, blimey, I was, you know, walking on clouds, basically. So I'm staying at, with John at the same place at Exminster. So you had to be at this, at the locker room at um, 6.30 because it was an evening game against Carlisle, kick off 7.30. So I thought, okay, well I can catch the, the 10 minutes to six bus, catch that one, I get into town 20 past six, 10 minute walk to St. James's Park, I'm okay. Right, so I'm all going up to the, to the bus stop and who's going away from the bus stop is the bus <laughs> so now I'm like oh my god so the next bus is like 20 past six or something so anyway I, I turned up at the park at seven o'clock Jack Edwards where the have you been you know <laughs> I said uh, I missed the, the bus Jack <laughs> so I, I think you know blimey uh, can you imagine one of those players from Manchester United like turning up late and saying, I missed the bus? <laughs> but anyway, I missed the bus and I'm in here. And uh, of course, I was all really uptight and nervous. Anyway, I was, I was real lucky because I was left wing 
and Dermot Curtis was playing centre forward. And uh, within the first 10 minutes, I managed to get the ball, beat somebody, cross the ball to the far post. Dermot gets up, bang, goal. And uh, we ended up winning the game. And it was a bit of a surprise, you know, because it, <laughs> there weren't at that season, anybody was expecting anything real special from Exeter. But all of a sudden, we have had a good start to the season. And um, it was like, blind, we were near the top, you know. I think they used to pick the divisions up or the, or the positions up after about five games. So our next game is against Aldershot away from home. And Aldershot was a pretty well organised club and, and a team. So we're playing them again and I'm still left wing. Somebody, whoever got injured, must have got really poor, you know, badly injured for me to still be out there <laughs> on left wing. But uh, anyway, we, we play against Aldershot, evening game, and uh, we win a game. So... Um, all of a sudden, in the dressing room, I mean, everybody's feeling real good and, and good about themselves and the team. So uh, I'm finished. I've just had a, like a shower and that, and most of the other boys are getting dressed. There's a knock on the on the locker room door, and uh, a lady says, "Is Arnold available?" So it was, I think it's George Gillard, Gillen, 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 Gillen. George Gillen. It was his wife. So she had. Um, I think she had 11 pound notes to give to Arnold to give to the boys, you know. So <clears throat> Arnold coming around and he, he's all the lads are around and, and he's there you go, there you go. So he, she comes up to me, Ar Arnold says, Here you are, son, here's a pound. He said, I, I've told you there's money in this game if you stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, but it was like, a, a, it's a bonus, you know what I mean? And uh, all the lads were, you know, I think then you could get about five pints of beer for about a quid, you know? So, yeah, it was over the, over the moon about it. And uh, it, was, it was good. <coughs> and that season, it, well, Banksy and all that now, I mean, it just blended along. And uh, I think luckily they found a proper winger and I was playing in the reserves for half, half the season at least. You know, but um, it was, a, a, you know, fantastic feeling. And at that time, the first team squad, they were so close to each other. You know, they helped each other on and off the field and anybody in a bit of trouble, somebody would come to the helping and all that stuff. You know, it was, it was a real team effort. And uh, it was a fantastic thing to happen, you know, after so many years of not basically doing too much at Exeter City.